Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Simply Food by TY, and today I want to share with y'all a recipe that I found for some pretzels years ago, and I've been making them this way ever since, and today I'm going to share it with you, okay? Alrighty guys, so either to your stand mixer or to a very large mixing bowl, you wanna add in one and a half cups of warm water, warm enough that it's kind of like a baby's bottle, not too hot or you're gonna kill off the yeast. Now to this water, we're gonna be adding in one tablespoon of sugar and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now those are gonna be the agents that's gonna bring our package of yeast to life. I'm using one packet of active dry yeast here. Now I'm just gonna let that sit for roughly about six minutes until it kind of starts to foam up a bit and then um, we'll come back and then we'll continue mixing. Now, now that that has clearly activated, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in our flour. Now, I'm gonna be using four and a half cups of all-purpose flour for this recipe. Now, just so you know, because we are making pretzels, that's the reason why we're using so much flour. And anytime you're using that much flour in a recipe, you wanna make sure that you are adding it in little by little. That's very, very important. It's the only way that your dough is gonna come out nice and smooth. Now, what I will say is once you get to about the halfway point where you can see you've added in about half of the flour, what you're then going to do is you're gonna add in about three tablespoons of Kerrygold butter. Y'all know how I am about the Kerrygold situation. This, this ain't no secret here. But do that about halfway through and then you can go ahead and add in the rest of the flour here. Now, I'm using a dough hook here so that I don't have to worry about kneading it or doing any of that. Um, I have mine on about a speed three and I let it go for roughly about six minutes. If you do not have a stand mixer and if you're going to be doing this recipe by hand, which you absolutely can, by the way, uh, you'll just need to knead it for, I would say, roughly about 10 to 12 minutes. It kind of just depends on how strong you are and how much pressure you're applying. Um, you just wanna make sure that your dough comes out nice and smooth, okay? So now that our dough has come out nice and smooth, as you can see, it's coming off that hook really, really easily. This is a really easy dough to work with. You don't really have to worry about it sticking or making a mess or, or anything like that. I'm gonna actually take the exact same bowl that I made the dough in. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons, two to three tablespoons of uh, vegetable oil. Do not use olive oil. Olive oil has a very distinct taste and that will alter the taste of your pretzels. I'm gonna give it a little toss around just to make sure that there's no dry film that coats this uh, pretzel dough. I'm gonna wrap it up in cling wrap and then put a towel over it. Find somewhere that's kind of warm in your house. People suggest uh, like the microwave or the oven or a pantry, somewhere where it's nice and dark and warm. Put a towel over it, let it sit for roughly, like I said, about two and a half to three hours. That once again will really depend upon how warm your house is. Now, once you've done that, you want to lightly flour your surface on wherever you're going to be working. Once again, this dough is really, really easy to work with, so you don't really have to worry about it sticking or you know, making a big mess, to be honest with you. Now, as you can see, this is doubled up in size pretty nicely here. Um, now, you wanna make sure that you deflate this dough, get as much of that air out as possible. That's definitely gonna help you when it comes to start to roll these out. I flattened it out a bit just so that I can cut this in half as evenly as possible. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is, I will then decide how many pretzels I wanna make from these halves. Now, I'm just slightly gonna put a little bit more flour on the top here. I'm gonna roll it over just so it's kind of like in a little cylinder type shape. I don't know why, it's just what I do. And then I'm gonna cut these up into five pieces. Um, now, I'm pretty sure you probably could stretch this a little bit more if you wanted to, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest it. Now, if you guys are wondering how in the world did I clean up all that flour, blah, 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 it's because I literally forgot to show you guys how to roll the things out. But luckily I had extra dough, so that's why it looks so clean right now. But as you can see, it's not sticking at all, so that's how good this dough is. What I'm doing is I'm evenly rolling it from the center all the way out to the end of my table. It might seem like it's excessively long, but that's what you want because it will shrink up. So once it gets significantly long, or as long as it can possibly go, roll it into a U shape, twist it over top of each other, Press the two ends in, and there you go. There's your pretzels. Now, this particular step here is very, very important. 
So what you have here is six cups of water and one third of a cup of baking soda. Now look, I don't know the science behind all of this, but all I know when I was in cooking school and all of the videos I've researched and every time I've seen somebody make these, this is what has to be done. If you skip this step, you will not end up with pretzels. You're gonna end up with something completely different. But what I will say is, is only leave it in that water for 10 seconds, then take it out. You're gonna repeat that step for all of them and then sit them back on the tray. Go on ahead and have your oven preheated at 400 degrees because we are in the home stretch. So now that we've had all of our pretzels treated in our baking soda and water mix, what I have is about two eggs and a few splashes of buttermilk, okay? That's that's the key here, buttermilk. Y'all know I love using buttermilk. Um, and I'm just slightly brushing over the tops of all of these. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting on some kosher salt. I'm gonna use the coarse kind so you can kind of physically see it. If you're able to get your hands on, you know, actual pretzel salt, by all means you can use that, but you don't necessarily have to, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. Just keep an eye on them, okay? Don't even bother setting a timer, okay? If now, wait, let me let me, let me me clear that up before somebody been a mess when I set their house on fire. When I say don't set a timer, what I mean is don't go walking away from them. As soon as you see them brown up like this, take them out of the oven so that they don't overcook, okay? 10 minutes in my oven might be something completely different in your oven, you know what I'm saying? So now that I'm uh, these are all done, I'm going to brush these over with some more Kerrygold. Now, if you want... You can also add some additional salt on the top of these just in case any fell off or if you know you want yours a little bit saltier. Honey, you can put a crab dip on these, bake them, pepperoni and cheese, cinnamon and sugar. You can do whatever you want. These are great for you and the kids to make together. It's absolutely fabulous. Look, if you are new to my channel, welcome to Simply Food by T.Y. I do hope that you guys tried this recipe and I hope you guys come back to see more. Now, look, I want you guys to have a wonderful day. Get yourself this recipe, go on ahead and make yourself some pretzels, and kick back and have a good old time, honey. Okay? Bye-bye. Slaying in the kitchen. Simply Food by T.Y. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply Food by T.Y. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Simply Food.